Okay, okay. We back at it again. We're yes, back you are. You back at I'm, it. I'm again. trying to get some of the. You know what I'm trying to do? There's a Brazilian rhythm. Mm -hmm. Well, they do it. Yes. And uh, it's hard. It's hard you, if you don't practice it. And I'm trying to practice. Yesterday, uh, we had a reading of chapter 4. I don't know how this happened, but in the formatting of the book, they gave me a format of one page for one chapter, where it should have been, I don't know, 15 chapters. Maybe I did it. I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter because we're going to continue mm -hmm. where we uh, left off. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well... We left off at Kokobiti. At Kokobiti. Right. And so for those who are interested, you have to review uh, chapters one <coughs> and three. God bless you. Thank and you. And Gazuntai. Gazuntai. Yes. Yeah. All right. And you will be up to date on the Snake 2020. And this, all we ask you to do is be up to date on it. This is uh, one of the resort areas in Ghana. We call it Little Kokrabite. Little Kokrabite. Mm. Uh, they don't have dance performances and things like that. But it's a nice place to go uh, to enjoy yourself and mm -hmm. be by the ocean. And if you feel sentimental, You'll remember that this is uh, maybe one of the beaches where our people were taken from. Ah. So, okay. having said that, <coughs> I'm going to begin. Finishing chapter 5 and going into chapter 6. Well, I'm finishing chapter... 5. Okay, I'm finishing chapter 5 and going to chapter 6. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed that you're so far ahead of me. Well, because I love the story. And oh. I love being read to. Oh, so, cool. read on bedtime stories. Well, okay. Let me do it then. Okay, please. They left their bags in the second floor room and immediately strolled out. I love this place. It really is nice. I think it's one of the loveliest places in Ghana. They linked their arms, tipsy from the scotch they had brought with them on each other. A gentle wind swayed the palms and ferns around them as they slowly walked down the gravel path toward the restaurant and the performance area. Looks like it'll rain tonight. Not before I pee out. <laughs> they took a right curve to one of the toilets. He went in to relieve his bladder. Beautiful sister, full of humor, warm, intelligent, sensitive. He was walking out of the toilet and was stopped by the sound of her voice. Kojo, don't come out now. Wait. The apprehension of her voice didn't make sense. Wait, for what? The sudden sound of whacking on the concrete steps of the toilet caused him to involuntarily flinch. Wait, for what? He pushed the door open to find Grace with a short stick in her hand, taking a couple of whacks at something that looked like a small black lobster. Scorpion, they're dangerous. I was afraid you would come out and step on the bloody thing. She tossed the stick away, brushed her hands together, and nonchalantly linked her arm back through his. They were a few yards from the restaurant. Would you like a beer? Yes, why not? The restaurant was half filled with white couples. Kojo whispered to Grace as he took a table near the window. <laughs> it looks like we're on the Africans here. We're the only ones who can afford to be here. Mm. Mm. They ordered their beers and focused on each other. Hey, that was kind of brave of you, you know. I know some sisters in the States who would have run away from the thing you killed. Really? Mm. 
-hmm. Take my word for it. They get real squeamish when it comes to nasty little things with lots of legs. We can't afford that luxury here. There's so many nasty little things running around with lots of legs. <laughs> she smiled a lot, you know, a, a kind of punctuation to her way of speaking. They sip their beers silently for a few beats, looking at each other. From a distant place, they heard the drumming that announces the news about to be broadcast on Ghana Broadcasting, mm -hmm. GBC. Mm -hmm. Kojo, knowing the Ghanaian love of the hourly news reviews, you want to go watch the news? <laughs> Grace frowned and smiled her little smile. They're not giving us any news. They're just videoing people giving great speeches. <laughs> he decided to press her a bit. So much was coming out of her that was unexpected. The restaurant slowly ground down to three seriously talking couples at three separate tables. The waiters looked sleepy. Kojo, you must remember, Africa is often a mystery even to us Africans. Run that by me again. You say, repeat what you just said. I don't know if I understand. Africa is often a mystery even to us Africans. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought you said. Please explain that. It sounds too mysterious to me. Will there be anything else? The waiter cut in. Mm. Yawning. No, oh, that's it. There you go. Grace, why don't we give these guys a break? They look like they're ready to fall asleep. They occupied seats in the area overlooking the outdoor dance floor, beer glasses in hand. The sky seems to be brooding. It's going to rain. You predicted that earlier. Is that part of the mystery? <laughs> Mm. Ah, I see you haven't changed. You still love to find out what others think. I like that in you. <laughs> she leaned over and kissed him. Uh -huh. Thank you, madame. She sipped her beer and tilted her face as the sky. I'm not sure I can explain what I mean about the mystery. It's simply something I feel. Here we are on this continent that's three times the size of America, the place where the human being originated, the place where so many different languages are spoken that they've almost lost count. In a country as small as Ghana here, we speak more than a hundred languages. Why? It's a mystery. We have life-saving medicines that people don't use and poisons that could kill cities. We have wars on this continent that make no sense. The wars don't make any sense anyway. <laughs> don't you think that the people who live on the continent where the human being originated should know that? Hmm. A jagged flash of lightning many miles in front of them lit up the sky for a moment. Yeah, we'll talk about mysteries. They were silent for moments of serious thinking. Ah. Uh, are African Americans a mystery? Mm. Mm -hmm. No. African Americans are familiar strangers, foreigners inside the circle, some more than others. They were high on the whiskey, the beer, each other. Mm. And they had reached into that uncensored place that would allow speech to express the truth. I can accept familiar strangers, but foreigners seem a bit much, don't you think? Damn, I've been here two days, they got me saying things like, a bit much. <laughs> Grace leaned her head back to stare at the millions of stars above her. Ah, uh, Kojo, you are, you are a foreigner, that's what you are. There may be another side of you, but the one thing we definitely know about you is that you are a foreigner. Now, wait a minute. The diaspora has to be brought in here somewhere. She squeezed her eyes shut, trying to capture the star patterns inside her head. Diaspora doesn't mean anything to the average Ghanaian, nor any more than Ghana means to the, Africa, the average African American. We didn't have diaspora lessons in school. We still don't. 
And I strongly suspect that many Ghanaians who have no idea what a diaspora means have a Japanese attitude toward the whole business. A stronger breeze was pushing the gentle winds to one side. What's that mean? Well, if you know something of the Japanese attitude toward the survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the problems that their descendants have had to face, they were blamed for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Exactly. Are you saying that that's the way Ghanaians think about us? I said, I strongly suspect many do. So where does that place the white man, the European in the scheme of things, the mover and shaker behind the whole business? He watched her take a long sip of beer. Mm -hmm. Obviously rolling his questions around in her head. We adore the Europeans. We idolize them. We beg from them. We copy from them. Kojo was beginning to feel slightly put out by the drift of the conversation. Grace, you're confusing me somewhat. It seems that the African American would be the adored one, the idolized one. Oh, yes, it's true, and we do adore you, but only if you come very close to the European standard. We don't want the confusion that most African Americans bring us. This overly developed sense of Africanness that you parade around. The European doesn't create this kind of confusion. He shows no inclination to assimilate or to imitate us. He knows that he couldn't do it if he wanted to anyway. He is and always has been exactly what he is. A bloody mean, <laughs> vicious bastard. Excuse me, God bless me. <laughs> He is and always has been exactly what he is, a bloody, mean, vicious bastard mm. who would sell his own children for a price. They often did that, you know. Mm. Yeah, I read about it. Which makes it still harder to understand why you would admire someone like that. She turned a wicked little smile in his direction. Please, don't take what I'm saying. It is really... It was his turn to smile at himself. Loosen up, Kojo man, loosen up. You're behaving like comfort. Don't you know sarcasm and irony when you hear it? Such is happy. <laughs> you know something, Kojo. Perhaps we envy our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. Should I take you literally? <laughs> yes, please. Yes, maybe we envy you in the deepest parts of our psyche. Well, why? Mimba, I'm coming. I love the way those two words are used. I'm coming, Mimba, mm -hmm. could be the cornerstones of another kind of philosophical thought. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be, I think, therefore I am, but Mimba, mm -hmm. I'm coming. Mm -hmm. Look at this this way. You've done your slavery. It's a done deal, as you say in Hollywood. We're still struggling through ours. We're coping with health care, slavery, financial slavery. Yes, some of us do know what the World Bank and the International Money Fund, we call it Amesh Money, International <laughs> Money Fund, <laughs> stand for. We're fighting for dignity, self-esteem, international respect, trying to deny that we're not divided by tribalism. Remember the little hot body they head up north a few years ago between the Concombas, the Dagombas, the Gonjas, and the Mamprusi. Mm. Uh, vaguely. Mm. It could have escalated to an Rwanda scenario if mm. the people hadn't stopped it. The people said, hell no, to the whole business, and it was over. Mm. But not before hundreds, maybe thousands were killed and displaced. Your tribalism was nipped in the bud by your enslavement. You were forced to disregard tribal titles like Yoruba, Ga, Akan, Konkomba, whatever. You became Africans in America, period. I'm in the AV. Do you know what that means? There was an urgency in her tone that forced him to look at her closely. 
Mm. No, I can't really say that. I don't know what that means. Well, then, I would never be able to explain it. I'm sure God or, 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 or the Nzema or Hauser could say the same thing. It has to do with an accumulation of things, layers of mystery. They held hands. She made him feel enriched by her presence, the way she spooled things out of for him. He liked the way she talked to him. She made him think of his family, the way they were able to say what they wanted to say honestly. Granddad, how did you come into this Afrocentricity way back then? I don't think I'd ever be able to put my finger on a moment that would say, yeah, right here, that's what it happened. It wasn't like that. My daddy's parents insisted on him knowing the true role of Africa. Africans had played in the context of world history. World history, not African-American slave history. World history. The sudden shock of rain splashing into their faces sent them scurrying to the warmth and dryness of their room. Mm. Chapter 6. Mm. Oh, chapter 6, I see. I'm going to leave chapter 6 until tomorrow All right. because I can see that it's one of those chapters that man a lot of dramatic histrionic feeling out of me and as a damaged diva I can tell you that I'm not feeling quite up to it today. Damaged diva. It's like <laughs> I, I don't know quite what's going on in my psyche but well, we'll probably do the uh, filming a little bit earlier and it's not as hot as it is right now. Is that it? Yes, yeah, probably yes. part of it. Yes, I'm, but, you know, I'm, I'm a bit feverish from the heat. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit... Mm -hmm. Let me sip a little bit of the ice cube. That's helping a bit. But that's where we are at this point. Yes. None of that... I'm combining what happened with chapter four and five yesterday. Right. So it's like going to sleep mm -hmm. and uh, sleeping with midway through the afternoon, you know, what that's right. like. Mm -hmm. And then you get up and you realize, wow, it's not quite night yet. So yeah. uh, you have an opportunity to have two sleeps in one day. Gotcha. So gotcha. what I'm okay. going to do is offer my listeners and lookers Two sleeps in one day. <laughs> okay. Starting tomorrow. Okay. Well, all right. So we'll post uh, four or five and. We'll get into six. Five. Tomorrow. Yes. Okay. And so uh, we'll be kind of broken up. But hey, we'll work don't it don't out. worry about it. We'll work it out. I got the whole book to it. <laughs> so. Uh, okay. So this is The Snake 2020. The Snake 2020. Which which is written with the dialect of the people that are speaking more so than I, I the hope, I hope Ghanaians who may be mm -hmm. watching this mm -hmm. will uh, grant me a little slack for making an effort to do a Ghanaian accent. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it might sound more like a, a, a West Indian accent than a Ghanaian accent, but mm -hmm. since I'm not from Ghana and I don't speak a traditional Ghanaian mm -hmm. language, mm -hmm. I'm just imitating to the extent that I can do it, mm -hmm. some of the uh, language patterns I've heard from people from Ghana. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. I do like the uh, beginning of a romance, you might say, or... Uh, you know. Here we are in 2020. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm just going to say this before we ease on to other things. Mm -hmm. You would think, as romantically as, romantically as some of us have uh, found ourselves feeling, mm -hmm about Africa mm -hmm. and the filmmakers who have made movies in Africa and so forth, that you would have had some kind of African, African-American romance happen cinematically. Uh -huh. I can't make myself believe that I go to movies uh -huh. endlessly mm -hmm. and I see uh, movies about Black guys fall in love with German women, or German women fall in love with black guys, or mm -hmm. uh, uh, in in what is Mississippi Masala, when 
when, uh, what's his name, uh, Denzel Washington, there's an affair with an Indian woman from India, mm -hmm. who happened to come from Uganda, by the way. <laughs> that was interesting. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any cinematic evidence of the African man or woman mm -hmm. being in Africa having a relationship with an African. Mm. Uh, I think it's a, it's a horribly, if I were Tyler Perry, mm -hmm. Tyler, are you listening? Mm -hmm. If I were Tyler Perry, I would be looking for love stories, especially love stories, because we fall in love, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I'm thinking of several guys I knew when I was living in Africa mm -hmm. who had married African wives. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Tyrone, who had the, the fitness center, mm -hmm. was married to a Ghanaian woman who was running his business. Much better than he was running it. Or your German friend. Or my German friend Jan Schmidt, who was married to a Ghanaian woman who was running his business <laughs> and much better than he could run it. Uh -huh. In Ghana, he said, uh, you know, Jan, Jan. He was from Hamburg. Mm -hmm. Tall blonde guy, could have been a little youth. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, he was importing earth moving equipment, mm -hmm. you know, tires as big as this room. Right. And, you know, uh, we go to the bank or something, and he brings his wife to, and he was very respectful to her mm -hmm. and loved her a lot. And his stepson by an African man, that's mm -hmm. a story. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Gwen, talk to these people. And say, yeah. you know, Jan, why don't you talk to him? What can I say? Right. I, can't, I can't speak the uh, Ewe uh, or, or Ga or Chi or anything like that. And this, this my, my wife, she speaks these languages and she's very smart. And so I, like I must that. behave myself while I'm here. When I go back to Germany, when I go to Hamburg, I'm a German. Here, I'm her husband. <laughs> yeah. How beautiful. What yeah. a love story. So that's yeah. a, that was a love story. It, it, it could be done all kind of ways. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we are in 2020, yeah. And people are saying, you know, black lives matter. <laughs> How about romantic black lives? Yes. yes. Black lives do matter, but let's not become so political that the first thing we did was love, and it wasn't mm -hmm. uh, vote. <laughs> I'm sure we loved before we voted. Well, hopefully we will love congratulations. We vote for. Hey, okay. congratulations to our uh, recently uh, candid elected candidate for mm -hmm. Vice President Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. uh, don't allow the uh, monsters to beat you down. We on your side. Thanks, mm -hmm. Joe. You did the right thing. And I'm mm -hmm. going to get out of here. All right. Before you go, your yes. books can be purchased on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, local bookstore. Go in and say, I want a book by Odie Hawkins. You can check out the books on Amazon, author's page, and or Odie Hawkins' website, which is www.odiehawkins.com. Hey, incidentally, I'd like to mention while you're at, while you're at Barnes & Noble, there's another book you could pick up. It's called Cast, C-A-S-T-E, mm -hmm. by a sister named Isabel Wilkinson. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't have to show it to you, mm -hmm. and I don't have to try to explain what's in it, because right. I just got it myself. And but so, I was well, looking at uh, MSNBC, and uh, Lawrence O'Donnell was jumping up and down in his chair. Mm -hmm. So I went out and got a copy, and after reviewing three or four pages, I can tell you. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, tomorrow, it's, it's, it's chapter six. Another, oh, finally, oh, okay. finally. Okay, another moment in time. Oh, you want to die. Oh, you want to die.